What's up guys? Welcome back to my poker vlog. Thank you so much to everyone who checked out uh, my first ever vlog published last week. This is episode two. This episode covers uh, two sessions actually played on the same day on an NFL Sunday. As an East Coast guy, something that I really am starting to appreciate about the West Coast is that you can leave, go watch the night game on an NFL Sunday, come back, and there's still time to play more poker. So we had two sessions combined into one. There was a ton of footage. It was really hard to cut down. Lots of hands I wanted to share, but if I did all of that, this video would be 30 minutes long and no one would watch. I really love making these videos. I've only made two, but I'll tell you what, I hope to make a lot more, both for you guys and for myself. So take a second, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and uh, this video you guys should enjoy. Lots of big hands, lots of all-ins. Took a page out of my guy Kendall Roy's book for this one. All bangers all the time. Yeah, all bangers all the time. And without further ado, let's get into it. We buy into the 1-3 game for $300, that's the max, and get ready to roll. The first interesting hand of the session comes with pocket threes on the button. There was a $10 raise from the big blind pre-flop, and we decided to just flat with two callers ahead. The flop comes a beautiful 9-3 jack, and we hit bottom set. Big blind continues for 15. Both callers continue as well, and there's nothing to do here but just call. When an eight hits the turn, and the big blind continues again for $25. Now it folds to me, and we have a decision to make. This is a pretty disconnected board, and a continuation on both the flop and turn is a pretty big show of strength from the big blind, so I feel okay to raise here. There's a ton of draws out there, both straights and a flush, and I think a raise of 75 is a pretty good sizing. Big blind thinks for a little while. No snap call, no snap fold. She's really taking her time here, has about 350 or so left in her stack. I have 200 left in mine. The big blind eventually does make the call. Okay, say it with me. No club, no queen, no 10. No club, no queen, no 10. Now we're off to a river, and the river brings in the king of spades. This card actually doesn't change anything, as queen 10 is still the nuts. And we manage to dodge everything. When the big blind checks to me, I have 200 left in my stack, I have to decide between an all-in and a value bet. I decide to go for a value bet of just a $100 sizing here, as the big blind has a little over 300 left in her stack, and I think we'll be curious enough to call 100, but maybe not the full two. She thinks for a little while and eventually does make the call. We show our set, and we're good against Jack-8. So quite a fortunate turn card there for us, the eight bringing in two pair for the big blind and allowing us to get maximum value. Off to a very good start in this one. In the next interesting hand, we have king 10 off in the small blind. It's a limped pot and we end up flopping king, jack, deuce. We have the whole world on this board with top pair, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. So I really see nothing to be afraid of at this time. Cutoff bets, $15, I call middle position calls, and the hijack calls. With this many players and no raises, my opponents are probably weighted towards a ton of draws, maybe some weaker kings, maybe even a curious jack x holding. We go four ways to a turn. The turn comes to 10 diamonds and our hand has improved. Once again, I check. The cutoff continues for $15 and now we're gonna get more money in. I bump it up to $45, which is about a half pot bet. We get two folds and the cutoff tanks for quite a long time. Not sure exactly what he's doing this with. Maybe a straight draw and a pair, maybe just a straight draw, maybe just a pair. But after quite a long time, he does decide to come along for the call. The river is just overkill and brings in the 10 of spades. This is an absolute perfect card as it not only fills us up, but brings in the front door flush. Now we do have the king of spades, so we have some blockers here, so it is slightly less likely that our opponent will have a flush. However, I am going to put some money into this pot. I lead for a $100 bet, and once again, our opponent takes a very long time to make a decision. He thinks for quite a while here. Unfortunately, he does end up making the fold. Not sure if the right move would have been to check and allow our opponent some rope to bluff. Still, nice to make a full house and take down a decent pot. 
In the next interesting hand, I decide to upgrade from King 10 to Pocket Kings. One of these days, I'll get my prefop action on camera. I open to $15 under the gun. We get five callers, exactly what we want to see with Pocket Kings. However, the flop does bring us exactly what we want to see with Pocket Kings as we flop top set on a very disconnected board. With $75 in the middle, middle position actually opens to $75, a full pot size bet. It folds to me, and are we set over set? Does he have two pair? Has he just gone crazy with a king? I don't care. I'm putting it in there. Just a call for $75. We have the best hand, and the best hand is extremely unlikely to change on the turn. No point in raising. The turn comes the eight of clubs, and once again, we check. Middle position bets $125. Now, with 350 in the pot, I really think there's only one move here, and I go all in. My opponent immediately looks flustered and asks if we're chopping this. Please make the call, good sir. I will show you that we are, in fact, not chopping. He tells me he's folding a really big hand, and this opponent and I had been quite chatty during the day, so I decide to let him know just how good of a fold he made. It's a really good fold. Let me see. I knew <gasps> it. I thought you had five kids. <laughs> One of these days I'll get paid with a boat. I just know it. In the next interesting hand, we downgrade from pocket kings back to king 10. There's a raise pre-flop from the small blind to $12. I come along as this middle position. We flop top two on a rainbow board that's very connected of nine king 10. When the small blind checks, I'm definitely gonna put some money in here. We have top two pair, but are very vulnerable to a lot of draws. I bet out $12. I think the sizing should be a little bigger in retrospect, maybe, closer to three quarters pot. However, both opponents do end up calling. There's gonna be a lot of turn cards that I don't like, so I definitely think I should have charged a little bit more here. One of those cards that I don't like at all comes with the queen of clubs. Now, the small blind takes the lead back and bets out 25. Nothing to do here but call. It's a bad card, we're losing to a jack, but there's still a backdoor flush draw and we have top two pair. We have outs if we need them. One of those outs comes in just the nick of time to save the day with the king of spades on the river. When the small blind checks to me, I feel very strongly that there's a good chance he has a straight here. So I decide to make a little bit of a value bet here, going with a $50 sizing. If he does have the straight, there's a chance he may even raise us here and then we can really get paid. However, unfortunately for us, my opponent snap calls, we show our hand and as expected, our opponent has the straight. However, not only does he have the straight, he has the nut straight with ace jack. Little surprise not to get a raise here. Certainly could have gone bigger knowing his exact holding, but still happy to take another one down. In the next interesting hand, we wake up with jack seven off in the big blind. Not normally a hand I would recommend playing, but in the big blind in a limped pot, we check it down. The flop comes Jack Jack King, pretty happy with this for a big blind limped pot, however, not gonna expect a whole bunch of action here. Out of position I check and it checks through. The turn is a nine of hearts. I decide to bet $10 just to build a little bit of a pot here so we can make something on our flopped trips. Maybe even induce a raise from someone on a draw, be it a straight or diamonds. Even a king, possibly. We get one caller from the small blind. The river comes a king, and now we've filled up. Small blind checks, and again, I bet a very small size here, just looking to squeeze out any little bit of value as possible. This backfires completely. When the small blind check raises to $60, we have a full house once again, but here it just seems like he's going to have it every single time. I tell my opponent I'm gonna make a huge lay down to him because he seems so strong in this spot and uh, I'll let you guys just listen to the audio. This is so stupid, I'm really, I think I'm gonna fold this to you. No, well that's fair, that, you don't have to look. I'm just saying, I really think you got this king on me and I'm gonna feel like such an idiot. From Jersey, I'll show Yeah, yeah, that's fair, I fold, I fold. Yeah, that's what I figured. My opponent shows us the good news that we did in fact make the right fold as he flashes a king. Unfortunate situation to lose with a full house, but uh, we can't really get too greedy here. We've had a bunch of them. This next hand is quite an interesting one, so strap in. We have ace-king suited, middle position, under the gun opens to 15. I immediately raise to 45. The cutoff calls, and under the gun calls as well. 
One thing to note about this cutoff player is that he was recently stacked in a set over set situation and is visibly frustrated. This is a player that I'm looking to play pots with. We're off to a flop and it's a very good one. Queen, King, 10, rainbow board. We have top top with a gut shot straight draw and it's a very connected board. So we're gonna look to get money in immediately. It checks to me, I lead out for $70. The cutoff calls, that's the player we're looking to get involved with anyway, so we're pleased about this, and under the gun folds. A perfect situation. We're now heads up with the player that we want to play against, going to a turn with top top, gut shot straight draw, and to be honest, I'm not convinced this player necessarily has to have anything here, he can just be making this call due to tilt. The turn comes. Nine of diamonds, not the best card, as once again, there's a one liner on the board and we're losing to any jack. We have a ton of value here, so I'm okay to check and see what happens. I think for a little while though, trying to feign some strength and the cutoff throws out a $100 bet. Now I have less than 200 in my stack, so I immediately decide to go all in here. He snap calls, so I don't feel great about the situation. When the river comes the five of hearts, he flips over ace queen offsuit. One of the very few hands we absolutely dominate in this situation. Very happy to end up in a hand against this player type. Against any other player in any other situation, I probably don't go all in there, to be honest, don't even call that turn bet. This is just a situation where you have to pick your opponents, you play the man, not the board. All these full houses and we can't get paid, but top top, sure, get it all in, double up. Why not? Let's do this more often. In the last hand, during the first session of the day, we have four six of spades in the big blind. It's a limp pot for $15. We are five ways and I don't see a reason to raise just yet. Flop comes and it's beautiful. Three, six, seven, one spade, two diamonds. We have the whole world here with middle pair, straight draw, backdoor flush draw. So when the small blind leads for $15, I just call, as does middle position. No reason to raise just yet, but if the turn brings a favorable card, I do think I'll try to get some more money in there. We have so much equity, as long as we're not looking at a face card, it's pretty much gonna be good for us. The turn comes the two of spades one of the best cards in the whole deck, as now we have improved to a gut shot straight flush draw. When the small blind leads for $45, nothing to do here but call. I do consider raising for a brief moment, but as of now, all we really have is second pair. Middle position folds and we are heads up. The river brings in the 10 of spades. Hallelujah, we have made a flush. No more full houses, just flushes for now, but I think it's going to be quite good enough. The small blind bets out 100 into a pot of about 150. Now, we've waited for this, we've called every street, we've been patient, it's time to spring the trap. The only question now is how much to go for. I take a long time to make this decision and really make it look as if I might be trying to bluff here. I feel that the small blind has to be fairly strong leading out on all three streets. There's a good chance he has a straight of some sort, maybe even a set or two pair. So rather than go for the all in, I decide to go for as much value as possible here with a raise to $220. The small blind does not like this whatsoever. It takes a very long time to think. He's in the tank for quite a while and when he doesn't snap call, maybe he doesn't have the straight. So now I'm thinking he has some sort of two pair, maybe even an over pair. That seems unlikely as it was a limp pot. So probably looking at two pair or a set in this situation. After a long time, what seems like an eternity for me, he calls. We show our flush. He mumbles something about a straight and folds. Although to be honest, again, I don't really think he has a straight in this situation. I don't think he would have really given that much credit to the backdoor flush. Happy to take down another good pot here. In our first interesting hand back for session two of the day, we have eight five suited in the cutoff. Middle position made it $12 to go pre-flop and we end up going four ways with a pretty speculative call. 
to king, seven, eight, two spades. Now that our hand is pretty good here with a flush draw, some backdoor straight possibilities, maybe even backdoor straight flush possibilities, when middle position makes it $15, I call, big blind calls, and we are off to a turn. The turn comes the seven of clubs. This card, not exactly good for us. Any seven here, we are dreadfully behind. The turn checks through. The river comes, a gin card for us. Very, very nice here. The jack of spades. Very nice to make the flush here on a card that also connects to a front door straight possibility. We have a few hands out there that we can get value from. The most likely of which would be the open-ended straight, eight, nine, maybe queen, nine, maybe even ace, queen that was speculative and hung around, not to mention any seven or any non-believing king. We certainly won't be raising here as our flush is only eight high, but if checked to, we will absolutely be putting some money into this pot. When it checks to me again, I decide to go for it. I bet the pot, hoping to get a call from a straight or a non-believing two pair. Eventually, our opponent does make the call with a straight. That worked out pretty well. Got value from the exact type of holding that we were hoping for here. That jack proved to be the absolute perfect card as it not only completed our flush, but completed his open-ended straight draw. What a river, what a hand to start out session number two with. Very happy to keep running extraordinarily good on this NFL Sunday at the Aria. In the last interesting hand of the night, we look down at six, four of clubs under the gun plus two. I limp and there's a raise to $8. For such a small price, I'm certainly not going anywhere. And we are six players to a flop, quite a beautiful flop, seven, 10, jack, all clubs. Early position, who was also the pre-flop aggressor, immediately bets out $40. This is a pot size bet six ways and to me feels like an overpair. I'm not messing around here. I make it 100, once again, betting the pot. Everyone else folds and it gets back to the early position player who looks extremely uncomfortable about the situation he's found himself in. He thinks for quite a long time, debates back and forth, he's shuffling his cards around. I really get the feeling this player does not have a club. Seems like he just has a really good pair, maybe even a set in this situation, but he does eventually make the call. The turn is the ace of clubs. When he checks to me, I'm gonna really put him to the test here. If he jams on us, then he has kings or queens with a club. If he doesn't, then we're likely ahead here. After our opponent thinks for a little while, he eventually folds. A Little bit of a risky jam there at the end, but we'd just been running so well, I figured, why not? and we take down one last pot to end the night. That's all the hands for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Totals here, uh, each session I was in for 300 and out for a grand total of about 1250. So very, very happy with how these two sessions went. Uh, it was a great day overall, got to watch some football, got to see a friend of mine that lives in Las Vegas and play a lot of good poker. Got very lucky, flopping multiple sets, ran extremely well. I guarantee you this will not always be the case, as you will see in some future episodes. Uh, future episodes coming up, I'm very excited to start working on those immediately, one of which is a very special episode. It's a 2-5 meetup game at Bellagio featuring Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi. It was an incredible day. I had a phenomenal time and I'm so excited to start putting that together for you guys. That'll be, I think, two or three episodes out. So once again, thank you so much. Please take a second. It'll only take a second. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Help me grow this channel for you guys and of course myself. Uh, thank you so much and until next time. Ali? Do you want to be in the poker vlog? <gasps> yes? All right, I'll put you in at the end. Good boy.